That show was so much fun. For 15-year-old Tyler Reed and his friend, 18-year-old Colin. Not really. I don't think so. The road to true self began with family. <laughs> But the journey for these transgender teens also includes exploring medical options to transition. I really look forward to facial hair and uh, my voice being lower. Like help close this gap between um, uh, how I feel inside and how I look on the outside. And we have some questions. To do so, families work closely with gender therapists. You have to like tell them like what's going on in your head and a lot of the time you don't even know. And doctors like Carol Malazzo, who was among the first in the Sacramento area to treat children diagnosed with gender dysphoria, born one sex but identifying as another. A person's gender identity is pretty much fixed by the time that they're three years of age and there's no way that you can actually change them. The pediatrician recognized the need for trans youth more than a decade ago and to date she has cared for hundreds of young patients. Back when I started 12 years ago it was extremely controversial. It's become less so because there's more understanding. For eight-year-old Taylor who was born female but identifies as male, the idea of going through puberty one day and developing female traits is a stressful topic. Taylor brings it up weekly. There, there's a lot of fear about, about um, developing. However, medication makes it possible for Taylor to hold off developing as female by essentially putting puberty on hold. Hormone blockers are taken at the first sign of puberty for trans children. Medication that allows development to stop for two to three years and is completely reversible if families decide not to move forward with transition. The only side effect essentially is you become a late bloomer. Hormone blockers are a medical alternative that buys time, giving Taylor and Katie a choice of whether to go through a female puberty. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. I believe at this point hormone blockers would be the best way to go to protect Taylor's, Taylor's um, self-esteem through high school. But for older trans children, the next step involves making permanent medical decisions to bring them closer to a full transition. Just to like continue like building like how I see myself. Hormone replacement therapy, known as HRT or cross-sex hormones, allows biologically female trans patients to go through a male puberty with testosterone, developing characteristics such as a deeper voice and facial hair, while biologically male trans patients will use estrogen to go through a female puberty, developing breast tissue, a widening of the hips, among other features. But as a result of taking these hormones, fertility stops and there is no going back. It is an ethical dilemma to uh, make a life-changing decision like this on a child that has not reached the majority of age. There's no question about that. Uh, that's why these things are taken very, very seriously. And uh, there has to be uh, a therapist involved to make absolutely sure that we're making the right decisions. A big reason trans families are forced to make critical decisions for their children at a young age is due to alarmingly high rates of depression and suicide. A UCLA study found that 41% of transgender Americans have attempted suicide. That's compared to 4.6% of the general population. Tyler Reed has experienced the suicide risk firsthand. You can go through eating disorders and you can go through self-harm and everything and like it won't get better. Once you have a suicide attempt, it's I was scared. I was scared for his life. Research released by the American Academy of Pediatrics shows that puberty blockers as well as cross-sex hormones can significantly alleviate depression and suicidal thoughts. So. For him, that's how I see it. It's to make him healthy. Um, it's to make him healthy mentally. There is a clinic specifically for transgender children. Located at UCSF, the Child and Adolescent Gender Center is a first of its kind in the country. Since 2010, families receive medical services, 
legal advice, mental health care, and education, all in one place. Dr. Steven Rosenthal is the medical director. We're having an average of more than 10 new patients referred every month, and it certainly exceeded anything that I ever had really anticipated. The risks for gender dysphoria are known, and medications are available for teens like Colin and Tyler Reed. You're supposed to live in the moment and enjoy yourself now, but all I see is like in the future when I'm like a manly man. But the doctors we spoke with tell us despite progress for treating gender dysphoria, more work needs to be done to understand the long-term effects for children medically transitioning genders.